Welcome back, everybody, to this next episode of Heresy Hammer. I've completely lost count of the episodes that we are on. Uh, just the disclaimer, it's very likely you're going to hear words like shit, fuck, and cunt uh, coming up <laughs> in this show. So if you're if you are a sensitive, if you're sensitive to foul language, uh, particularly from Lee, then Uncouth. then then just leave right now. Unsubscribe, come <laughs> out of it, and go watch something, a Disney film or something, because this is not the show <laughs> for you. We we are very passionate wow. about our hobby, and it's reflected in our language. So, um, we are so it's myself, Mendes Miniatures, and we've also got uh, oh, Lee thanks. from at Death from the Shadows as well today. And this is going to be a little bit of an interesting episode because we're going to talk be talking about what's missing from Horus Heresy. So we put it out to you guys. We also put our heads together at the Heresy Hammer team, and we kind of said, you know what, if we could write a wish list of units. Uh, what would those units be? So we've got a we've amalgamated a list together, um, and we have kind of come up with a few ideas about exactly what we might want to see with those units. If you're unfamiliar with those units, maybe you're not, you know, overly into the lore and just into the game. Then we'll kind of talk through some of those units, like the Triare or the Devourers or whatever, just to give you a little bit of background. Um, and uh, you can tell us, uh, we will tell you what we think would be cool, but also in the comments below, you can let us know what units you think are missing as well as uh, what you think would be a cool unit and maybe one or two rules. We don't want to, you know, rule, whole rules profiles, but one or two, two rules you'd like to you'd like to see. So that's the show we've got for you. Before we get started, though, we just want to say thank you to our sponsors, as we always do. Thanks to Dan from Gator3D Printing. If you want something bespoke printed, he's the man to go to. We have also got uh, Bits Monster, if you want some bits, uh, for your models uh then he's this guy's the man to go to so if you're looking for like say a squad of mark five or you're looking for a sprue with a vexilla on then you can go to bits monster as well and have we got any more after that nope that's it oh no that's the it and we're gonna go, perfect we're gonna go to our heresy hammer so if you're unfamiliar with this section and you're new to the show uh we have our hashtag heresy hammer on instagram where um, kind of is a, a, a massive collection of um, Horace Heresy hobby, particularly from the 2.0 era. Um, and what we do every show or most shows, we pick a few uh, kind of great examples of Horace Heresy hobby that people have been working on to show. So if you haven't been chosen yet or haven't been selected, don't worry. I'm sure we will get to you, but there's just so much great hobby going on from month to month. It's, it's obviously, we could do a whole show dedicated to it and we still wouldn't get through the 10,000 photos that we got on Heresy. <laughs> so uh, we've got Magoo models. Uh, so I've seen this uh, guy working an awful lot on his Ultramarines of late. He's got Salamanders, he's got Custodies, but he's been really focusing on the Ultramarines. He went to a um, a an event in Denmark, I think, with our uh, friend of the show, Dawn Zarrow. Um, and I saw that he was gaming over there with uh, Tonka and a few other people as well. Um, and he's got this awesome, I don't know if it's a champion or a Praetor, but it is absolutely awesome, isn't it, Lee? A really, really cool conversion. Yeah, I feel like most people have probably seen this by now because it was kind of doing the rounds on the Instagram, yeah. but um, it's a fucking awesome model, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely Very cool. cool. Yeah, and like lots of, like that champion base model for any Legion, I think it's is, great. Yeah. is top notch. And then yeah. kind of giving it a dual handed weapon or other weapons, I think is really, really cool. Uh, we've got some awesome Sons of Horus from Neuro Bolter. So these are not obviously official models, but they look, I mean, this looks really sinister, right? It's awesome, it's isn't like, it? This is uh, like artwork rather than uh, yeah, uh, yeah. This could be the front cover of a black library book. It? Yeah, yeah, um, it's ab absolutely, yeah. Uh, absolutely baller. But it looks um, pretty in line in, in proportion with what we might expect to see from new Mark. Yeah, 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 and yeah. What we've seen with the Apothecary as well. So yeah, they're yeah. absolutely awesome. So make sure you go follow Neuro Bolter. What have we got next? Ooh. Oh, so Victor Pesh painting. Victor comes up an awful lot. He does some amazing photography, actually. Um, so amazing models, but his photography is on point. Absolutely awesome Abaddon uh, conversion. 
um, or I'm assuming it's Abaddon, but using the yes. Sons of Horus Praetor uh, model with a kind of an additional lightning claw and, a, and a, a sword weapon swap as well. So yeah, really, really awesome. Great photography. Definitely, if you're looking to up your photo game, he's somebody to go have a look at with like just a nice background, you know, a couple of like stones and things like that. And you can just, you know, exponentially increase the quality of your photos if you just give it like, you know, a printed background and a few stones on it and then take your photos from there. So yeah, definitely one to uh, go check out. Um, Borges underscore of underscore heresy. So we've got a very kind of chaotic or chaos kind of like <laughs> the sons of Horus, blood splatters everywhere, embrace so the embrace the embrace the dark gods i kind of with this i'd one. have uh, uh, i'd have said normally that this is a bit too much blood but i just think it looks fucking awesome yeah like, I, I i just love it you just imagine him storming through the battlefield just hacking dudes left right and center yeah it's funny um, because with world eaters because they've got white plate the blood shows, just shows up, up so yeah. much yeah but you kind of like you they should have a lot of blood on but when it's over the top it's so obviously over the top yeah but this like even though it's a lot because it's a green plate it actually works well because it's just it's less dark. garish yeah exactly yeah. right yeah she's done an absolutely awesome job um with yeah i love it proper grim dark yeah love it awesome cool let's have a look what's next Right, so uh, we have got the Legionis of Stasis next. And uh, so that is a group of guys, including <clears throat> Anuj, who we featured on the show, and Samit, who we've also featured on the show previously, friends of the show. And uh, Samit has definitely upgraded his um, camera uh, recently. <laughs> I think he's using his missus a camera. And you can see absolutely awesome uh, Space Wolves uh, Venator here. And you can see all the nuance to it as well. Often the problem with grey vehicles is that it's often very difficult to see all the kind of like the hard work and yeah, the nuance it that gets lost, yeah. That goes into it, especially in a sports hall where you're playing games. So it's absolutely brilliant to see this. And I like the old school yellow ja um last yeah, cannon end yeah. as well that reminds me <laughs> of a red scorpion's um uh forge or tutorial back in the day. So yeah, very, very, very cool. Uh what have we got next? We've got any more? Yes. All right. So we've got two here. So we've got Raptor Imperialis, another friend of the show, Kieran. <clears throat> so I'm sure you probably already follow him, but if you don't already, then make sure you do. He's been painting uh, lots of, I, I think they're called High Elves. Is that what they're called from uh, uh, from, from Fancy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wouldn't know about yeah. such things because um, I like <laughs> my my hobby to be in the 31st millennium. Um, <laughs> but he's gone, after doing all that, he's gone back to some Death Guard and he's turned a Tortuga marine with an iron hands legion head um kind of like praetor champion century yes um or you know or sergeant or whatever um and he's done a beastly uh paint job with this um so it looks it's, absolutely gorgeous it's insane isn't it i absolutely yeah. love this i wasn't going to put it up because i feel like i've put way too much of his stuff up but it's just so fucking good you could really you, is. you, you yeah. could not you could not yeah. and then We've also got Ollie. So Ollie's working on um, a Lunar Wolves army at the moment. Um, and he won a couple of awards recently, I think at Beachhead for a couple of units. Um, they kind of cleaned up. Uh, okay. um, and yeah, it's great to see kind of like a Crusade era Sons of Horus. And I think he's done a couple of like, I guess the 3D printed helmets, I assume, that are kind of like this older yeah, style. Yeah, I'm not sure, yeah. Um, I guess that, you know, that, but they're really reminiscent of the False Gods um artwork kind of like helmets that kind of are really reminiscent i think of the great crusade and the lunar wars in that period so it's great to see this i think he's using tortuga bodies which i think is really good for ollie because it you know isn't bigger area to show off all the cool yeah. kind of like weathering work that he does um uh, so yeah it would be great to see this project on the table i've not seen it in real life at all just videos and things like that so um yeah it's really looking cool it's looking pretty great really isn't it yeah it's looking brilliant yeah proper like false gods cover yeah. art vibe yeah yeah I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah awesome cool we've got any any more it. It? No, so, okay cool oh there we go Heresy right Thursday. so uh we've had a number of releases new things that we've seen and we're going to go through them now since our last show probably about like a month's worth of uh, yeah it's been releases. a while yeah 
So we had uh, the Black Library, the Art of the Horus Heresy. Uh, so if you're into the artwork, this is probably something you'll probably want to pick up. I don't know if it was limited. It certainly looks like it's yeah, hardcover. Yeah, I think it was. So I am um, because I've got the old one, whatever it's called, the Visions um, of Heresy. Visions yeah. Of heresy. Yeah. So I was tempted to get this, but I couldn't be bothered with the yeah. um, Warhammer website. Yeah. Is it, what? Uh, what? Yeah. Pre-order. What... What a sad Nightmare. thing to say. <laughs> so, the if you're unfamiliar and have only just joined uh, Heresy since its mm. latest reincarnation, there was back in the day, we're talking 12, 13, 14 years ago, uh, an RPG card game, the Horus Heresy. Um, and from there, there was a book created called The Visions of Heresy. Now, The Visions of Heresy is actually a great, there it is. So, is actually a great um, size of that art book Dick. but it also actually goes through the story of the horus heresy as well it's actually in yeah. chronological order and you have very early art from uh all sorts of great um kind of illustrators um and you know sketches by john blanche and things like that about what the earliest ideas of the horus heresy was um was meant to look like and then you've got the more obviously up to date <laughs> stuff that we kind of expect to see within the black books, and that's all within the visions of heresy. This, I think, is exclusively artwork from the Black Library novels. But I uh, know okay. that one of the authors, I want to say Neil something, I can't remember what his name is, um, has done an updated version of the False Gods cover, um, to make it more Sons of Heresy, which is quite cool to see. Kind of, um, quite cool to see that. But if you're just into artwork, and you are looking for inspiration, I think, for your own hobby projects. Actually having these on hand to flick through is often good. But if you don't do that, it's often a good book just to have in the bathroom when you're going for a massive dump. <laughs> if you want to kill 20 minutes and not look on your phone. Because sometimes yeah. looking through the artwork can be inspiration while you're having a poo. Um, Although so, it's probably sold out now. so uh, Yeah, who, who knows? <laughs> yeah, hopefully you can get a PDF copy. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so a nice a nice addition. Not for everybody. Certainly if you're a gamer, you're probably going to be less into it. But if you're a hobbyist and kind of want to be inspired and you love the artwork, this one's for you, I think. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so uh, we are no, um, you know... We are very familiar with siege, uh, <laughs> siege, siege breakers on on uh, Heresy Hammer, castle uh, wreckers, but castle crushers <laughs> or whatever it might be. Yeah, um, <laughs> but we um, got to see a new version of the siege breaker from Games Workshop. So I think that uh, I'll wait to, for my opinion. Lee, what's your thoughts on this bad boy? I don't particularly like it, if I'm okay. totally honest. Okay. Um, okay, I don't hate it. Yeah. I wouldn't buy it. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just don't really like it. Um, okay. Any, anything you do like about it? Though? Anything you like? Oh, yeah, that's um, good. Basics, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's got legs and arms yeah. and a head, right? Yeah. Um, no, nah, just to me, like a, a siege breaker. Um, they've kind of given him heavier armor, but Mark mm. Six just doesn't fit a siege breaker to me. It just my brain does not work yeah. with Mark Six Siege Breaker. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And then I know some people like it, but the little arm thing holding the yeah. iPad. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, how heavy is that tablet? <laughs> like, how, how, what well, does so it maybe, need? Well, it's got like, like a servo arm just to hold a <laughs> okay. tablet. Um, that kind of just makes my teeth itch a little bit. I don't okay. really understand why. You, you, I'd, I'd rather see like a little minion holding it, like a. Oh, okay, a that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, that's um, cool. So yeah, some, some human. Like, yeah, like, like a separate model just holding it on his head or something. But yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's it cool. Just, yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan. It, 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 it doesn't scream heresy to me. It, it looks more like a, a 40k model, really. I think. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm not a fan. Sorry. Cool. Uh, so <laughs> I you really tell me you love it. Yeah, I quite like. I th I see what I I quite like elements of it. So I actually think like the iPad, the fact that they've got like a Mark Six Marine, like as if like a it's like a hologram popping out and he's talking to that person. I think yeah. that's really cool little details. And actually, lots of these things can be used 
on say like a mark three model right so that arm you put yeah. a van, you put a van brace on it you yep. can and then just take off the shoulder pad you could use that for a mark three mark three model and i think that 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 would look quite good the hammer's quite age of sigma like i was I gonna say that in, yeah in, in in the way that it's um designed although it's a heavyweight hammer you know perfect for a siege breaker i i tell you what i would use this for is like a tech marine i i think right. i'd put the helmet on i think the mark six helmet's quite good and then I did have some kind of queries about the soft armor elements of it. So what looks to be kind of like soft armor on the front and on the on the on the shoulder pads, which looks yeah, it's, it's a bit but, weird, isn't it? But I think it's probably less soft armor and probably more reinforced armor that they painted black, so it but, kind of looks like rubber. Yeah, I think if that hadn't been painted black, it would look a bit yeah. better. You could paint um, it like copper or something and just looks yeah, like a yeah. reinforced motif or whatever. But um yeah, I thought I think overall it's all right. I would give it a I think the paint job's fucking amazing though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um I would give it a six out of ten for me. Not the best I've seen, not the worst. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Cool. Yeah. Let's have a look what's next. Um oh. right. So and <laughs> I want to say Endred Har, is that the that's the I think that's the correct name. Uh, um, yeah, we'll go with that. So if you want to know a bit more about this model, there is a short story. I can't remember what it's called, but it might be called The Riven Hound, where this guy goes to Zana 2, the Forge World, and he goes, fucks it up. And he goes, fuck <laughs> shit up. So there's there are some short stories that involve him, but he's also a key uh, player in the Saturnine Gambit as well in the Siege of Terror stories. And he's a bit of a badass in there. Um, he is a world eater. Um, he doesn't seem to have the cybernetic uh, implants because I think he was kind of like lost on you know, into the far flung areas of the galaxy and then came back and was like, holy fuck, what's going on? The the, the whole world's gone mad. And, uh, then, and then became yeah, like okay. a and then became uh, kind of like a black shield fighting for um, for the for the emperor. I would say Did he end up fighting Khan. Or am I uh, thinking of someone else? No, I think you're thinking of someone. Okay. I think you're thinking of someone else. Um, but in his old rules that we got in book six in the first edition, he was like an absolute beast. He was like strength five, toughness five, or at least like toughness five. And he looks like an absolute fucking yeah. whopper of a model. <laughs> so he's either going to have battle hardened one, battle hardened two, or he's going to have toughness five. I don't know which one, but I think he's going to be beastly. But I think what's great about this is that we're starting to get little flashes now of what's going to come up in this in in the new in the new Beta Garmin book, you know, and this is just like a little like taster of um what is to come. So yeah, really exciting to see this model. And I think the other thing is that um you could use lots of these parts to do yeah. a world ears yeah. like Praetor conversion, right? The backpack you're you're, you're gonna see this model more yeah. than one place aren't you yeah, yeah absolutely definitely. yeah yeah it's really really cool and it's an absolute fucking beast i uh i fucking love it i would i would say that i'm not massively keen on the damage on the shoulder pads mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a little bit too much for me yeah um but i think that's easily replaced easy yeah easily um, replace those things but yeah. it's the little details that i love like the bonding studs are just kind of like yeah, they square, aren't like, they? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just yeah. look like they've been, it, it's all just been bodged, doesn't it? Yeah, he's proper chunky, um, isn't he? He's a chunk. Yeah, like he's everything huge. about him is chunky. Yeah. Like the little uh, world eater symbol on his, his, the sole of his boot. Yeah, um, loads of attention to detail yeah. on what could be just quite a plain and boring model. But yeah, it's it, awesome. And a very unusual gun as well that we've kind of not seen. Yeah. That, you know, that silhouette is quite unusual. Um, you know, almost like a hand cannon, isn't it, or something like yeah. that? But, um, yeah. but yeah, so yeah, awesome model. We look forward yeah. to seeing what you guys do with it, whether it's keeping him as the Riven Hound or doing kind of other world E3 things with him. As and well. more Mark V. Do we think we'll see Mark V yeah. next? I, I think I think they'll do. Oh, next. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mark IV or Mark V. I think it's a coin, a coin toss. I think because um, they're going to release, um, I think. Have we shown it already? I can't remember. Um, there's going to be rules for black shields, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like Mark V fits black shields quite well, the yeah. most. But who knows? Cool, cool, cool. Anything else? What else we got? I'm sure oh, we got I'm some sure. other stuff, haven't we? we? Go. 
So we got a Legion Medusa and a Legion Basilisk all in one kit. And that was shown, I think, last week. Um, so, you know, this will be great if you're into Solar Auxilia. Uh, there's not much more I can say about it. It's a really nice no. tank. It's really well done. The paint job's amazing. They had like a really cool interior shot as well. So if you want I a lot think. of detail to it. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, the level of detail <laughs> to these models is absolutely nuts. But also, if you're looking at this being like, wow, it's amazing. Also, I'm sure you're probably thinking, wow, this is going to be daunting to paint this to a to a, to a a level just, that it deserves, just, right? Just glue the back shut. <laughs> yes, yeah. Glue the back shut. Yeah. Forget about it all. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, the level of detail involved in these models is, is, is absolutely nuts. But I think yeah. that they're, you know, it, what's... There's nothing bad to say about having more options for the Soda Auxilia, is there? It's just great. They have more options in plastic. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, that's it. And here we go. Awesome. So we're going to go through... Um, well, I tell you what, let's take a break now. And then when we come back, we're going to go through the missing links, the things that we think and you guys think are missing from the Horus Heresy range. And then we're going to discuss them... One at a time, I'm going to go through potential rules that we could add to them as well. So we shall see you after the break. Hello, hello, and welcome back. Um, so this show is actually uh, one of the shows that was given to us by Josh uh, from At Water Beast. If you can remember back to our Christmas giveaway, um, Josh won it. So that's where the idea for today's show comes from. So thank you, Josh. Um, and obviously the title was The Missing Links. I was very tempted to put a picture of the Merchant Princelings uh, cast as the opener, but I thought they might have a little cry about that. Um, <laughs> but the question given to us was, what units do you think would really add something that is missing from the range slash rules? For example, the Kratos was introduced in 2.0, which added a heavy battle tank to the range that bridged the gap between the lighter Sakaran and the super heavy chassis. Not necessarily which models need to be redone, released, but what new units would you introduce? Can I can I just interrupt yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. So is the Kratos the only new Legion mm. generic unit that we've got uh... for Heresy 2.0? Is it the oh. only new thing? Or is everything else being redone in plastic? The fact yeah, that you're everything. finding it every the fact that you're finding it hard to tell <laughs> suggests to me that it might might be one of, if not the only Yeah, new I think it is, isn't model. it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, interesting. Yeah. So actually it's a game that's been kept alive on the old units. Um because only the Kratos I can think of the top of my head has yeah, actually I can't been, think of anything a, else. Is a brand new mm. kind of generic Legion unit. Yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting. So here you go. Um, Games Workshop, here's some ideas for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we put our heads together and came up with about two ideas. <laughs> um, so then I put a message up on Instagram and uh, the internet um, provided. So what we've done for today's show is, is we'll, like Rob said earlier, we'll go through uh, the lists and we'll kind of have a little chat about what the unit is and and how we think it could work in the game, the kind of what the rules could be like, etc. Uh, and I'll split it down into sections. So the initial bit will be our ideas, what we came up with uh, as the Heresy Hammer. And then it's the viewers' ideas. So I've done kind of like infantry uh, and then vehicles, cavalry, uh, legion specific units, and then other is there's a few random ideas. And then people gave us a load of rights of war, which um, wasn't really the question, but I thought we'd go with it. Cool. And then even though Josh said not new, uh, not re released units, mm. but new units, but mm. I threw in four units at the end that I would quite like to see that we have rules for, we just don't have models for. Okay, so, cool. Okay, that makes cool. sense. Yeah, so, so quite a, um, an all-encompassing yeah. chat and conversation on uh, on this one, right? So first up was our ideas, um, which was actually 
more than it took us about more, a week more, to come up with more these. than two okay cool so um, we've got we've got two world eaters ones haven't we so yeah. these guys feature prominently in the book uh betrayer by aaron dempsey bowden which i think generally is kind of universally considered the best or yeah. one of the best horace heresy yeah. black oh. library novels and it tells the story of the heresy and um uh from and the shadow crusade from the perspective really of the world eaters although um the word bearers are uh, main protagonists but really it's told through the perspective of Khan. yeah uh two units that we are introduced to there are the triarii which is led by uh, a captain delvarus who is a character who appears also in 40k novels in the abaddon uh, abaddon series but also uh, okay. the world eaters devourers as well so the triarii their main task is basically ship borders but yeah. really within that book they are tasked with protecting uh the conqueror they are elite trained yeah. boarding action warriors but really you know their their main area of battle will be the conquerors to defend and there, there's a part on the planet well part in the book where they go to the planet and the captain latara saren is completely fucked <laughs> off that they've gone to to invade the planet because they yeah. the conqueror is left without defenders it's so uh, it's a very good scene yeah it's great so <laughs> the the triari so this i suppose we could break this into two sections which is that we could have a captain delvaris named character which would yep. be really really cool but we could also just have a unit of triari and I, I guess that what we're thinking there is a squad of veterans who have access to boarding shields um and even you know might be cool to have access one in five uh having access to special weapons like phallic blades or meteor hammers yeah. Um, yeah. which would be cool because Delvaris is kind of described as having a meteor hammer. Um, and then Delvaris himself, you know, he's described as a pit fighting champion. He is the pit fighting champion of the Conqueror. Um, so it'd be great to see kind of a weapon skill, you know, six weapon skill, seven to reflect that. But he obviously has a meteor hammer. So even, you know, he doesn't need an absolutely brutal weapon, but, it, you know, even like a master crafted meteor hammer might be quite cool to have have him with along with all the other rules that you would get for for the for the for the um for the word world eaters um as for the world eaters devourers so they've got an interesting backstory there's a great scene within that book where angron is speaking to lorgar the devourers who are essentially his cataphracty clad command squad kind of follow him around and he's constantly trying to shake them off and lose them you know these guys <laughs> were once the best fighters in the legion and actually <laughs> It it's not really an honor being part of the Devourers. They 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 don't really protect Angron. Angron is not the kind of person to be need bodyguards or, and they even have that kind of conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And and nobody and even, you know, so Angron kind of goes and says to you know, to Lorgar that he's invited Khan and, and various others to to join the devourers, this elite cadre of warriors that protects him. And Khan just kind of laughs it off and said, absolutely no, this is, this is an absolutely <laughs> thankless, thankless task to be part of the, uh, of the devourers. So I guess, you know, rules, I think that, you know, something along the lines of that you don't, um, you know, you could take like Angron. Yeah. If you take Angron, you can take the devourers only, um, but they can, split as soon as the battle starts and actually perhaps they can't join yeah. one another i think that they they have to stay a certain distance away from angron because otherwise yeah. he just gets fucked off with Fuck, them. Yeah, fucked yeah. off with them you know even yeah. something as simple <laughs> as that you know not they don't necessarily need uh super duper rules no. um but it's just something that reflects the, the actual lore, uh, cool. the actual devourers themselves i mean they were like the elite of the world eaters um, yeah the only way you could join the devourers was to fight another devourer and kill him and kill him. Yeah. Um, in close combat. Or yeah. if someone was, if one of them was killed in battle, they'd be replaced. They'd have a, they basically all comers, uh, yeah. everyone would have a scrap and whoever's left standing was yeah. the devourer. So they're, they're no pussies, but no, yeah. yeah. Angron, so yeah, Angron Angron just five, does... <laughs> six maybe, but yeah, it just yeah, doesn't give two, so, fucks, yeah. two fucks about them, does he? But yeah, no. so it'd be, it'd be cool, I think, to see uh, to see, to see see that unit. I don't remember being much about what they're equipped with. No, I, I don't think it goes into that. I seem no. to remember they were in cataphracty armor, but... Um... Yes, yeah, they're in cataphracty armor, definitely, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Be great. Great to see that unit. Cool. Uh, so uh, one that we probably definitely need is a solar assault tank. So solar have access to the companions and the Velatari storm sections that can have a storm axe. Both pr all right close combat units the problem they've got is that they can take a um dracosan that is not an assault vehicle and the solar range just desperately needs a, uh, an assault tank like it for those particular units so they're not blown off the board as they're kind of like going towards the enemy or they're not waiting with their dick in their hand uh getting shot off the board as they got out of their dracosan right you know yeah. i don't care really how expensive it is whether it's 350 points you can give it a flare shield it's similar to a uh a spartan but it needs an assault vehicle of some kind to help it compete on the level that the space marine legions are, are working on right yeah yeah um it kind of blows my mind that they don't have an assault vehicle at all no it's not um and if you don't want ang uh ogres charging out of vehicles then just don't let it have bulky don't let it take bulky uh, uh models but yeah yeah they definitely need something don't they yeah. yeah definitely you know even if it's a light armored assault tank as yeah. a as a compromise you know um but it's they need an assault tank i think because one of the achilles hills is 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 the is the lack of assault vehicles for the solar mm. auxiliary um, so we've got Sons of Horus Lupakai. So uh, these are, I, I guess, the nearest comparison we would have is the Galvor back, isn't it? With well, they these they essentially are, aren't they? They're the Sons yeah. of Horus Galvor back, basically. Yeah. So these kind of first appear um, in Ventral Spirit, where Malagurst and and I think um, uh, Tormageddon is maybe, I think it's Tormageddon, um, is oh, dabbling remember. dabbling with. Um, turning marines into the like half possessed possessed marines and yeah as lee says they're you know sons of forest equivalent um you know so i guess what you don't want to do is kind of like a just a cookie cutter kind of like doing the same kind of kind of thing but you might expect them to be kind of toughness five two you know two wounds a piece whatever i i kind of see the gal volback as like the hardened veterans so the the gal volback were the original ones weren't they they were yeah. the first ones that got kind of warp touched and and merged with demons so they're kind of like the uh the the pure yes uh kind yes. of corrupted uh yeah. uh marines whereas the lupakai are kind of like the poor man's version is kind yeah. of how i see it so yeah i think yeah. uh kind so of less, less wounds, style, maybe. but yeah drop a wound yeah maybe drop the strength or something keep the toughness something yeah. like that like yeah. um but yeah i mean essentially you're gonna go off the galvor back rules yeah. oh and <laughs> excuse me uh corrupted as well yeah okay um, yeah yeah because yeah. they are kind of warp touched um, it'll be interesting to see whether they thought about possessed space marines in the kind of because you've got specifically the Galvor back and whether you would just have a generic legion entry which is possessed space marines which are two wounds apiece toughness four tough you know strength four yeah weapon skill four you know they're just basically two wounds but they've got the corrupted rule and yep. then from there you could like it would be cool like we had with the old Castellax. Like if you and rather than creating kind of individual units for each legion, you have a unit profile. And if they're Sons of Horus, they gain this rule. If they're Thousand Sons, they gain yeah, this I rule. Like if they're the, you know, so they've got a generic possessed profile, which allows the Galvor back to remain special because they're the only possessed ones that are you know, particular yeah, to that legion. Yeah. And then you just give them one simple generic rule, like they have done with the Inducti. Um, yeah. which I think would be quite cool. And then you can make your conversions from there. And I actually think the the new Space Marine, Chaos Space Marine possessed Marines, the updated versions of okay. them yeah, yeah, are, yeah. are actually pretty good. Like with a little yep. bit of work, you can convert them. They'd be pretty good as possessed uh, possessed Space Marines. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I guess, you know, we talk about <laughs> possessed Space Marines <laughs> and then we go on to the Raven Guard Raptors, right? So these guys are the outcomes of um the alpha legion fucking around with the gene c <laughs> um dicks. kind of the raven guard tr and correct trying to create their legion after they got mauled at isvan 5 yeah. they'd gone to the emperor to go get the gene c technology they came back to deliverance with it and then the alpha legion fucked with it and then they basically inadvertently created these bizarre 
creatures who are still loyal to the Raven Guard Legion, but you know, some of them have like bird heads, some of them are like wolf, wolf kind hands, of yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're they're really like fucked up. They are yeah. the Emperor <laughs> would purge them from his legions if it, you know if he could, but they are still used by the Raven Guard in in some operations, you know, at Yarrant, for example, that they are they yeah. are used there. You know, and again, it's interesting here because you could still have a possessed kind of space marine um profile. And but for the Raven Guard one, you you know, it would still have that profile, I guess, which is that, you know, two wounds. Yeah, this is the thing, isn't it? Because when I when I thought about it, I was like, well, they would be the same as the yeah. Lupakai, because it is the 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 Alpha Legion basically drop demon into yeah. the uh the whatever the it is. Taint the, into them, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they are essentially like demon mutated things. So yeah. they would be again like a poor version of the Galvorback, but instead of being traitors they remain loyal um they kind of know they're the freaks don't they they realize like yeah we're we're, we're the wrong ones but we're still ready to uh to fight kill the, the bad right? guys yeah. yeah yeah exactly i think if they did special models for these they would look fucking brilliant if they yeah. if they did uh you know a, a... bird-headed kind of marines yeah right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so one I came up with was a master of inducti. So we have ye- we haven't got any characters, not even apothecaries, can join inducti units at the moment. I think that having come some kind of master of inducti would be quite cool, just to give them a little bit of either close combat punch. He gives some kind of additional um, benefit, but really, you know, you I suppose in my head, a master of inducti would be a normal legion centurion. Yeah, you know, he's got leadership nine. Um, and you know he's buffing buffing them to give them you know leadership nine because they've they've all got relatively quite low leadership, um, but also you know he could take the weapons associated with a centurion right, and I just think that some kind of additional rule the fact that you can give them ca- a, a character who can take on more challenges, and can lead them I think would be a, a cool addition to yeah. you know and actually like a master of inducti it doesn't need a whole legion profile it's just a piece of text that big like we have with the chaplain like we, yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah yeah it's just a centurion add-on yeah 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 um, exactly yeah it's nice I and like simple it, to do yeah someone's got to be in charge of them haven't they <laughs> like... exactly exactly right yeah exactly exactly right and i think that um you know i don't know even if you dropped his weapon skill down to four so he's just basically like a normal marine who's in charge of them you know something yeah. like that yeah, yeah, but yeah it's just an additional character within that unit i think he's stuck with all the new work. guys it's like oh God, <laughs> yeah okay, yeah. Fucking, yeah, yeah yeah exactly oh no, exactly. don't do that <laughs> yeah yeah is that that's how i see it yeah. yeah um so i don't know what a legion palisade drop pod is what is that so this uh is um one of the future releases we have seen for legions imperialis and what it is is a um dreadnought drop pod Mm. with a shield generator in it what Um, so when you do your drop pod um assault yeah the idea would be you have one of these and it provides an i don't know like an invulnerable save within a certain distance of that drop pod to protect your dreadnought coming out of the drop pod and to protect everything within if you're bringing all your drop pods down in the same point you have an area that provides a invulnerable save i can't believe that's not coming to the main game i I would be surprised if we don't see something like this because if it's come in tiny heresy yeah You'd like to think eventually it will come to uh, big, big, big boy heresy. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think it's a really cool idea. Like, I think it makes drop podding a little more survivable. Yeah, and it makes um, um it. I mean, if you look at it from exactly right, it makes it more survival, which is it, and also you can now it 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 makes intercept less powerful right yeah that's the other thing isn't it yeah. that's that's it you're you're not getting rid of intercept you're just making it not necessarily as harsh yeah yeah um and i think it's quite an easy easy thing to do it's basically a drop uh, dreadnought drop pod with a bit in the middle um yeah where the but... dreadnought would normally stand it's just a yeah shield generator so um was the was the was on the old dread the radio dreadnought 
Yes. It, what I was, was it gonna called? Put this in. Was it called the Palisade, which oh, gave like you know the three inches? I can't remember. Oh man, if you know, write in okay, the comments. I'll tell you what, I need to find out. Lee's gonna, gonna, Lee's gonna drive me fucking Lee's mad. gonna find out. So basically it was dropped from the um from the new if you're unfamiliar with what we're talking about, it was dropped from the 2.0 but essentially you could give a derradio dreadnought a palisade which meant that everything within three inches of that derradio dreadnought and full would fall within that bubble including the radio dreadnought it's invulnerable save would be increased by plus one so you had a dreadnought with an invulnerable save of say like a four up and then you could put some cataphracty what often happened is you could put tyrant siege terminators near that derradio and then it would give them a three up invulnerable save and that yeah, was good no, because, it was, um, because it was called that, a, what was it called? Sorry, it was called a at uh, at a mantic pavace. A pavace. Uh, okay, so not quite. This is quite quite no. the same. That's why I kind of like. Kind of but that was actually slightly. one of the things I was gonna put in, but yeah. I, I changed my mind in the end. But fair but, enough. Uh, I, I think they, that's a really cool concept. So would it in in Legion Superioris, is it like a plus one to the Invan save? I, I honestly, I can't even remember if they've actually told us the rules. Oh, uh, right, okay. I feel like I remember reading that you get an uh, yeah. a, and within a set amount of inches yeah. from that, you just get like a five plus in one rule save. Ooh. So any unit. But I could be completely wrong with that. I could have just made that up. So write um, in the comments below. It would be great to see though, a Dreadnought Drop Pod giving a plus one in run to what's everything yeah. within three inches. So like your infantry get like a six plus yeah. and then your, your dreadnought gets a, gets a four, a four plus. Yeah. I mean, a Leviathan with a four plus, you'd be pretty confident dropping that. Or even just oh, a five plus. Like I say, like you wouldn't necessarily But it already, have to but it already it. comes with a five, five, five plus the... Yeah, but uh, you don't have to use dreadnoughts, do you? This could be... Oh, I see. No, I guess infantry. not. No, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah, I see. Um, yeah. But yeah, I like the idea of that. And I also think it helps something that is kind of struggling at the minute. Yeah, yeah, good point. And um, we've got the Spathra uh, attack bike. Yeah, so I didn't realise I'd put this in here, but this okay. was basically the old attack bike. Do you remember from first edition? I you did. had I did. it was the old forty k model. Yeah. I would love to see something else other than just um, outriders. Like yeah. it, it was just nice. You could just you, we don't really see bike armies anymore, do we? I mean, I think because they're probably not quite as good as jet bikes, but. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I just think He's... it's a shame that we don't have anything like that. There was, yeah. it, it feels like we've gone back a bit on these, some units. These were good because they were good for cheeky little multi melter shots. Yeah, yeah. You run yeah. them in. They were fast attack. Run them yeah. in units of one. There were two wounds, so you could drive them into things to time up. T five, yeah. And um, and just yeah, and just run around, um, shooting things with multi melters. But yeah, um, there's a few other ideas that the 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 viewers kind of gave us that come back to this but i quite like the idea of fleshing out um like bike units jet bike units yeah um something to make them support yeah 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 this um, is because basically so they're not just proteus javelins and bikes yeah, right? that's yeah, what you're exactly. saying you're just kind of yeah, saying yeah let's yeah. let's make it more varied which would be more exciting yeah yeah cool okay cool right well, let's have a look at some other ideas so these are viewers ideas and these are the infantry um so this is interesting because i read this last night when you sent it an assault squad with bolters now i think this is quite interesting because um reavers essentially do this okay because they could buy um their special six up breaching um kind of like bolter right you know, bolters, and they can also take a jump pack as well the thing I would say, the only thing I would say about bolters, if you're going to give them to assault squads, is that this assault, assault squad would need to have relentless in some kind of way, because um, you you would want to double tap and then charge if you're in a assault yeah. squad, right? Yeah. So I think it's quite a cool concept, but the additional rule that you would have to give them to make them feasible and for anybody to take them was that they like their bolters come with suspensor webs or something like that like it just something along those lines okay. that would allow yeah. them to be practical in game because you're doubling the number of bolt pistol shots um it's good for dot hopping around uh, objectives because that's what they would become yeah they yeah. become tax tack marines that can move very quickly mm -hmm. 
Um, but in order to assault, if you do want to assault with them, they would need to have, I think, some kind of like suspensive so, web on the bolter. It's it's funny because when I first read it, I was like, well, that's fucking stupid. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, well, yeah, why would you not have assault squads that just carry bolters? Like, I yeah, quite like yeah. the idea of it. Just a yeah. bit of fire support for the, yeah. uh, the dudes yeah. that are running around charging things. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I quite like the idea of it. I, yeah. I like. It. Yeah. I thought it was cool. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Uh, this one I thought was even cooler though, which is a veteran assault squad because I the and this is this is my feeling on it. If you try and I have done this, if you try and give a command squad all jump packs and upgrade them with whatever weapons, they become so expensive and they can just be wiped off the board or half of them can be wiped off the board by a fucking 120 point um uh, uh well went scorpius right like literally yeah, yeah. you know that that 500 600 point command squad with all the jump hacks is just going to get uh, nuked and the assault squad like they're good but they don't pack a massive amount of punch no uh, is the thing i would say for them yeah. you know they're a line unit you want them on objectives but you also want them in assault but they're not brilliant assault because they're obviously weapons school for so some kind of veteran assault squad is the like halfway point. We see it with the Reva aggressor squads. You know, we've seen something similar, I guess, with the Blood Angels. You know, but I know the Blood Angels, Dawnbringers, or Breakers, what they're called, are a specialist unit. But essentially, they're veterans with a two up save. Yeah, with assault, assault. You know, the assault, assault marines. Um, so having like two wound weapon skill five veteran assault squad would be and everyone can buy a sword like these would be off yeah, the fucking yeah, yeah. chain yeah. it's funny because i remember having this conversation back in first edition of like people wanting veteran assault squads like yeah. i just like it i think it's a brilliant idea like yeah. if you want to run uh uh you know a kind of um assault heavy force then sticking these in the elite slots just makes sense really doesn't it like yeah I, yeah 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 it's cool Cool. And then uh, so kind of in a similar vein, which is we've yeah. got a veteran veteran breacher squad. And I think that this goes to the heart of the issue, which is that it like breaches are great for standing on objectives, but they're not dynamic in a way that you go. So a really good example, I think, with like breacher squads is that in the Crimson Fist, which is a short story with Alexis Pollux in, he's there training his breacher squads to go in to fucking bash these guys around the head with your fist and your shield. And like they make a whole big deal of it. And actually, these breacher squads are often very, very aggressive units uh, described in stories, particularly in like zone mortalis situations. And they're always fucking charging and smashing in each, like people's heads in with these, these squads. But in the game, often what they become, because they have a low number of taxes, really, you put an apothecary with them and they just sit, they're objective sitters. Yeah. They're, never, yeah. they're, not, they're not designed in game to ever be aggressive. No, you know, you know, they're there to either slow things down or, or to score. Um, and having that ability, because when I think of veterans, I think of weapon skill five and two wounds, and then being ha having the option of being able to upgrade every single one with a, with with a with a um, with, with a power weapon. Having that, yeah, and then with line or whatever it might be, you know, not even with line, it is 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 I think a really cool option. Again, though, yeah. you know, you might people watching this might be like, well, you can have a command squad with breacher shields. You know, and and get it that way. Yeah, you absolutely can do. But you, the thing about the command squad is that you've got to take a master of the legion. We're specifically talking about a unit that can stand on its own. So if you want to call it a command squad, uh, you know, that doesn't have to take a praetor, it would be in a similar vein to that. And I and a good comparison, I think, would be um, uh, the ultramarines um squad that can take swords and a and a shield. Okay, yeah, yeah. The problem I think you've got with any kind of breacher squad is always going to be. Uh, the comparison with Invictus Suzerain, because the Suzerain five man, they have a, a five up, four up in close combat. Uh, they're two wins apiece. Each one is characters. So any benchmark you do with any kind of like veteran breacher squad has always got to be against the Suzerain because Suzerain 175 points for five. They're fucking dirt cheap for what they do. You know, every single one is essentially a Centurion. They've got an AP2 uh, yeah, weapon. So if you can't make something competitive against that 175 point Suzerain squad, then, you know, it, 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 if you're an Ultramarines player, for example, you just go, just I'm never going to, uh, you just take yeah. a Suzerain, you know, yeah. It's, yeah. it's just a no brainer. So I think that when you do that, you've got to, you've got to use these special units that have access think, to similar things. I think it's easy do. enough, though, isn't it? Three plus, five plus. Uh, you know, two attacks rather than because that's the trouble with 
breach of squads. As soon as yeah. they get in close combat, they just don't do anything, do, do they? Yeah. They, 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 um, so yeah. yeah, kind of two attacks. Um, yeah, I think it'd be again in the same vein as veteran assault squad. If you want to run kind of like a zone mortalis, uh, like breacher heavy, and then sticking these in your elite to go kind of break break the opponent's lines in places. Yeah. I think um, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, even even you wouldn't get it for close combat weapons, right? Because you got one inch shield, but actually having three attacks on the charge rather than two, you know, will make a big, big difference. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, so we've got a veteran Terminator squad, and I guess, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's exactly the same conversation, isn't it? Which is yeah. that Terminators are good now that they've got two wounds. They've got inexorable as well, which is a great, great rule to 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 have, but it's the weapon skill four that hurts them. So being having the option of being able to have an extra weapon skill is going to be useful for your Terminator, yeah. Terminator yeah, squad units. Yeah. But again, you know, I suppose you're kind of thinking... Is it going to be quite similar to a command squad? Command squads can only go up to five, you know, that is if they're in Terminator armor. So having the option of making a Terminator squad go up to ten might be quite good. But again, you've got to you've got to make them so expensive that normal Terminator squads are still an option. That I think that's the thing because rather than yeah. you can here you, you want to compare downwards, these. yeah, because here you want to compare downwards, which is that you need to make them just expensive enough, you know, that actually you have to make a choice about whether they're worthwhile as well. And I think the other one is that, but let's be honest, Games Workshop have done a pretty good job about giving most legions pretty decent elite Terminators. Yeah, right? yeah. So, it's yeah. a it's an interesting concept because I think most people when they think of Terminators think they're veterans anyways. But obviously, yeah, during kind of heresy, Great Crusade heresy, they weren't necessarily. You know, you had depending on the legion, you had entire companies of just Terminators that are just kind of heavy assault. They're not they're not elite dudes. They're just the dickheads that have to breach the wall. Yeah, you know, in the in, heavily in, armored yeah. dickheads. Yeah, in the first um, hor in the Horus Rising book, Loken talks about the fact that his tenth company has access to some cataphracty armor and they're right. not the first legion they just have access yeah, to yeah 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 trying it out and this you know? is this so um one of the things i thought about something like this is is even if you kind of only made it available to like pride of the legion yeah um so you have to take normal terminator squads for your line units and then you can take these as an elite option yeah, something okay. like that you yeah, know just yeah. something so you're, you're taking a terminator heavy force yeah and this is just something that gives you a bit of punch because the trouble with terminators at the minute the normal terminators is i think they're pretty good but they are very limited in what they can do yes yeah, they are yeah. only weapon skill four they're not yeah. going to go and bash up an elite unit they're going to get the fucking dicks handed to them yeah 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 um, absolutely so i, I do actually really like the idea of this um yeah but then you could argue that most like you say most um legions already have an elite terminator unit yeah yeah it's interesting so, i think yeah. yeah yeah i think all of those options are interesting and whether or not you said you you added a like a a supplementary paragraph to the what we have already as the veteran kind of yeah yeah, which is that if you want to upgrade them to all have assault jump packs, then you can do that. If you want to upgrade them yeah. to all have breach, yeah. If you want to upgrade them to have Terminator armor, you can do that. So they keep the same profile, but they're just more variety within it, which I think is um, an interesting option. Cool. So we've got uh, breach of sports squads here. So um, yes. so this is really interesting because I just see this as basically you could have a melter support squad, but it essentially is slow. Because it's gonna it's gonna be heavy because of the breach shields and have an invulnerable save, right? That that's that's and I think that this is something that ZM this would really come into it. Yeah, own. yeah. I I th I think the, it sounds like it could be very powerful. You know, like it's a hard unit to shift that yeah. um it's got a good save and it's throwing out a hell of a lot of fire, but the cost would completely um you know kind of equalize the fact that it's going because, to do a lot of damage because you couldn't take one of these a, a unit like this in a, a rhino right you'd have to take a proteus if you want so to you're gonna have it. to take a land raider and yeah. you know like you say if you're not playing zm they're gonna be fucking shuffling across the yeah. board they're not going to do anything so you almost yeah. kind of have to take yeah a land raider so you know you're talking several hundred points you know five six hundred points but 
I think it could be fucking good. What why um, I like why I like this as well is that it gives um more options to say if you wanted to do like a breacher company and like everyone's given breacher shields, you know, I know it would be tough and and in some and like I know there'll be people be listening to this. You know, it would be yeah. And it wouldn't be Imperial Fist, so it's not complete bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? With the right of war, you know, like that. I think it would have to be mitigated in some way with that, with the with the the Imperial Fist right of war that allows the rerollable save or whatever. But yeah. I think that um, you could make them so expensive. I mean, all options are good, but you can make them quite expensive. That you would have to. It's a tough choice whether or not you would just take them as a normal sports squad or a sports squad in yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, like yeah. or or you make the weapons on them prohibitively expensive which is that the melter becomes like 20 points and the you know mm -hmm. you know flamers are 10 points they're more expensive and they're more reflective of like a heavy support kind of oh, weapon, flamer breacher squad would be cool as fuck yeah it would, that i think about this would be cool there's quite a yeah. lot of flavor yeah, within yeah. within like the yeah. storytelling of this you know if you're taking yeah. a true rei company of bo like borders like having the option to take some sports squads is actually a great option if you want a theme of force around that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. So, corrupted marines. I mean, we we kind of have spoken about this really, haven't yeah. we, already in our in our conversation? But we definitely think there's some, uh, you know, as we said, having a generic template legion unit and then giving it a special rule. I, I think always so, think yeah. it's quite quite a cool way to to go about doing it. I mean, by the time you get to the siege of terror, half the Chiefs of legions are corrupted anyways you know there's only 100%. a handful that aren't some are completely batshit and some aren't but yeah i would the other yeah. the only other thing i'd like to see with corrupted marines and i'm not sure if this is the case with galvor back but what i would like to see is that they can't score and they can't deny either so they're pretty uh, tough like the t their yeah, t5 yeah. or whatever will have battle hardened you know one um but they are they are you know they are incapable of scoring and denying as well i think would be quite quite a yeah, cool way well, to like mit that. mitigate the strength on them yeah because essentially you're just like well they're just slightly better veterans because they've got a better toughness but i can deny with veterans and i can't deny with a yeah, raptor yeah. marine squad so yeah like to like see that uh destroy terminators now i want to say that there was a whole i want to say like something like the Liber panoptica or something yeah. like that it has loads of legion entry, uh, entries and the de destroyer terminators and the saturnine terminators i think were units that you could take within those i think there had been some fan made okay. fan fan made rules and the destroyer terminators were things like you could give a volkai culverin to each of the terminators or you know and they have you know, phosphex bombs or rad, you know, because essentially it's rad grenades, right? Yeah, you really want to, yeah. you really want to give them. But yeah, I think both of those are pretty cool options. But beyond for destroyer terminators, you're just kind of thinking, you know, you you're giving them a bit of duty, rad yeah. grenades. Sergeant has a phosphex, you know, and then perhaps some cool weaponry, one in five, or or everyone can take volkite culverins or, or volkite charges as as they come or something like that. I uh I just think it's a cool cool idea. Cold concept, I just yeah. I think yeah I just yeah. think as an idea it's fucking brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 100%. Yeah just black terminators absolutely battered just going around phosphexing things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool cool yeah, I theme cool. I think as well. Like I, yeah. yeah just a, it's just a cool theme. But I think uh, I would like to see what because what you don't want is a situation where these would be just the obvious choice so again you just want them weapon skill four you know they've got that and the points reflect the additional upgrades that it becomes yeah. a, a challenge to choose between normal terminators or destroyer terminators yeah. that's the, that's the thing so, yeah, yeah. The, but they're cool satellite terminators now i know there are like entries for this fan made entries but i um i'm not such a massive fan of the models personally but i don't know yeah. how you would make them different from what do you give them a three Three up in vulnerable save. So or something I, like I that, think or... they would be somewhere between a um, a Terminator and a um, box dreadnought. Right. Oh wow. Okay. I wow. Think, yeah. Because have, have you ever? Um, so I put that artwork up at the beginning. Yeah. Um, oh, I've forgotten what it's called now. There was a there was a fan made um, video about um, Calf. Do you remember it? I, I do remember, remember it. Yeah, I do. Remember. And there's like a hulking great big. Yeah, Terminator and there's a in scene it. in that right at the beginning where they're walking through one of the word bearer ships, and a Saturnine Terminator walks past, and it's fucking huge, and it looks 
absolutely amazing. Yeah. That is where I see Saturnine Terminators because there are some real derpy models out there that just look dumb. <laughs> like, they just, right, yeah. like, I'm not a fan. But I have seen some models that look absolutely amazing. And that's where I would see them. Um, like, kind of toughness five, free wounds. Uh, maybe, yeah, like a two up, four up. Um, so I would go the opposite way. So I would give them, I, I agree, like Battle Hard one or two five. I know I've said this for quite, for quite a lot of units. Um, but I would like to either see a five up or a six up because I kind of see that the the cataphracty is the next development stage within the Saturnine, yet yeah, within yeah. Saturnine. So I want the invulnerable safe to be worse, but I still want them to be heavy. Okay. But okay. I want them yeah, to yeah. be survivable in the sense that, as you described them, they're bigger, more chunky, more armored than a than a cataphracty terminator. So make them improve the toughness. Um, you know, or keep the toughness the same, give them an additional wound to make them three wounds to reflect the fact that they're, they're really hard to take down, but give them a five up or a, a five up in bun save, but make them heavy. So there's somewhere weirdly okay. in between the cataphracty yeah, yeah. and the... Um... Um, and yeah, like kind of squads of three. Oh yeah, squads of three would be interesting yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I like that's that. That's how I see them. And just, yeah, you can give one like a fucking awesome support weapon or something. Yeah. So okay, it's yeah. Just, I, I love the idea of them and... Oh, I wish I could remember what that thing was called. It was like we'll, we'll find it and death, put it in the comments below. It was like Death of Honor or something. De it, death of it, I think it was Death of Hope. I think Death of Hope. Yes, yeah. I, I think yeah. that is. Um, if you haven't watched it, if, I don't even know if it's available on YouTube. I, don't know. I think Games Workshop were all over that. To be honest, yeah. yeah. But um, the scene where the Saturnine Terminate, I remember watching it and I was like, yes, that's yeah, what that it works, should look what it like. Should be. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we've got some veteran status upgrades for units. So, so I, I guess we've covered that already. That's exactly what we've discussed. So, rather, yeah, rather yeah. than having individual units, basically, you know, assault squad and then a little box that says for however many points you can upgrade, upgrade this, it to to, veterans. which I think is uh, a nice idea. Yeah, I love that. I, rather I, than I, just... Yeah. Uh, and I, I love that because you could be like first company upgrade, right? So you can, yeah. so not, yeah. they're not just Terminators. These are veteran, they've got veteran on us. It costs, uh, you know, 10 points per guy to upgrade them to have an additional wound and uh, weapon skill five. Yeah. And then I suppose from there, it would allow you to then think about the modeling of those models uh, and <laughs> the kind of plate. So like Imperial Fists, you, you know, if you've upgraded them as, and it would be great to see within that rules if you're choosing those rules you must paint them according to their first company panoply or something like that yeah and yeah, it's something yeah, yeah, something, yeah. something that's going to make you work for having that upgrade i think would be pretty pretty gnarly um and and again this could even be something that got put into the rights of war so like yeah. uh yeah. angels wrath you can take yeah. you get the veterans option uh yeah. for assault for some for yeah, yeah assault so months, yeah, yeah. But I do, I do, it's like I say, it was something that we used to talk about kind of six, seven years ago of like, yeah. you know, I would love an option to be able to upgrade assault squads to make yeah. a fighty, a proper fighty assault squad unit. Assault force, yeah. Um, but yeah, cool. Who knows? Awesome. Online. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. Great suggestion from you guys. Let's have a look what's next. So vehicles and cavalry. Yeah, so a mid-tier transport Sakaar and chassis. So we have currently got a 300-point uh, Spartan that you can upgrade with a special air shield for 350. And if you want to give it an additional last cannon, it's another 10 points, 15 points. We've got the um, land ready Proteus that comes in at 220, which I think is still a really reasonable cost for a yeah, mid, it's not mid, terrible. Mid, yeah. mid transport rate. Um, and then... Um, you can upgrade that with searchlights and last cans for for 240, which I think is reasonable. And then we've got this mid-tier transport sky and chassis. Now, I'm not sure if this person was referring to having it as an assault vehicle and whether this person wants it to be faster than, say, a ride. Yeah. So, so there was there was quite a bit of uh, there was quite a few comments, and some people were saying kind of oh, assault ramps. Um I don't see it being an assault vehicle. I right. see something like this being almost um uh oh god i've forgotten what like they're a, called now the fast like attack a, like a, option like a, um you oh, mean like I... an arvis lighter or something like that no 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 um infantry um 
Oh, fucking hell. Sorry, my brain's not working today. Well, you, but you're describing a, a basically a something faster than a rhino that's more heavily armored than a rhino. Yeah. So, Seeker Squad. So, right, something yeah. to carry like a Seeker Squad. So, something right. that you, you drop the, uh, the turret, drop the side sponsor, and give it like, I don't know, a heavy bolt or an auto cannon on top or something, twin auto cannon, something. Yep. And it has like, fast you know it's fast you can Got move it. it around the battlefield dudes can jump out and shoot dudes in the face that's kind of the idea i had in my head but then right. other people were talking about kind of like a fast moving assault vehicle yeah. so the problem um, i think you've got is that you can't have your cake and eat it if you have a fast agree, yeah. moving assault vehicle yeah. then that fast moving assault vehicle will allow you to get off charges turn one now charges yeah. turn one can happen in rare and unusual circumstances but if you just go oh okay well i want a tank that can move 10 inches i get my guys at six and then have the potential charge that like you already have an assault vehicle that restricts you from first turn charges which is a lamarader proteus which is actually quite reasonably costed i think that there is some that, that's sorry that is my opinion so i think you're trying to have everything no i agree uh, yeah, and yeah. and you know it, i mean you could if you wanted to sakar and chassis you could limit it to five guys right and it would stop you from but i even then i think you're chancing your arm I do think you're right, though. You could have some units that, like, say, like recon squads that have a specific fast moving vehicle. And actually, I wouldn't like to see a tracked vehicle. I would like to see something like we had for like scout squads in 40k, which were um, oh, um, land speeder, like yeah, tra yeah. land speeder yeah, transporters yeah, yeah. For, s yeah. for smaller squads, for squads of five, yeah. so they can move around the board quickly. And then that would be different from anything that we've seen. We, it would be an interesting. Um, you know, different chassis from anything that we've seen, not not a treaded tank, but interesting to, um, it would be interesting to see, say, like, Seekers having access to those and um, Recon Squads having access to access to those as well. Yeah, I love the idea of that. I'd forgotten all about them, the old... Um, yeah, yeah. Scout, yeah. Scout, yeah, the Lanspeed, Scout, Lanspeed, Scout Lanspeed, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah so like if, you're, if you are somebody who thinks we should have a mid-tier transport that's an assault vehicle i would love for you to put the points of that down below and explain to me how it's different from a land raider and how you would stop it from getting first turn charges off because that's the thing you've got to stop you've got to prevent people from getting first turn charges off i mean space wars can do it right because they can you know, in, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that's yeah. a that's a legion rule. You can't have everybody having access to that, you know, as a as a as as a as a thing. Uh, so we've got a Rhino Advancer, which is I yeah. assume is just kind of like a scouting. So uh, I rhino. had to Google this. Um, it's basically a longer version of the Rhino, right? Open topped longer version of the Rhino, right? Okay, that was used by the Space Wolves. Um, like a longboat kind of thing. Yeah, 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 kind of. Right. Um, and and oh god, I can't remember where I read it, but the the it, basically in Prospero was was where they it kind of mentioned them using it. Right. Okay. So and essentially, yeah, Viking longboats. It's, right. It's yeah, literally, and it's it looks kind of daft. It looks a bit derpy. I yeah. I've put a picture of some old artwork at the end. Um, okay. At the end of the show, but I saw a 3D printed version and it actually looked really right. fucking cool. Yeah. Okay. It was basically a rhino open topped with handles yeah. on the side. Yeah. And and essentially, yeah, like you roll up and because it's open topped, dudes can just jump out and assault from it. Oh uh, so interesting. Mega fragile. Yeah. You know, it's easy to pop. Yeah. But actually, you know, rhino rush it's interesting uh, so, it's jumping yeah out. okay it's interesting that because i like i much prefer that over say like a sakaran's chassis yeah yeah because if it's being open topped it would be plus one to pen so you'd need like a yeah, five yeah, to yeah, blow yeah. it up yeah the 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 you know strength eight um is just going to blow up half that unit and you know it being a salt vehicle i like that and you could make it like 100 points right but it's such a death trap yeah. That you have to be an absolute fucking Viking maniac. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To even consider using it, I just love the idea of it. Just a load of these, you know. I, 
<laughs> I just yeah. think almost like 40k orcs, like yeah, well, yeah. old old 40k orcs, like yeah. all or nothing. They're either gonna all die or they're all gonna get in your lines and kick. Yeah. Fucking I like that. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Um, yeah, I like. Yeah, cool, cool, cool idea. I think that's. Um, yeah, I like that. Not not bad at all. I very much doubt they'll ever come up with that idea. But no, yeah, okay. yeah. no. <laughs> uh, so we got scout cavalry units and recon bikes. So this is interesting because we, I think, previously had access to other yes. kinds of bikes that we no longer have access to in this version of the rules because they never made rules for them. Whether they come back or not, I don't know. Scout cavalry units, I think, is a really interesting prospect. I think. Outriders already come with Scout though. They can already move twelve inches up the board. Okay, yeah. They can I think they can, although somebody might want to put it in the in the comments below. Um so when I, I think of recon bikes, I think and I don't even know if they're still available, but in 40k you used to have like essentially a scout squad on bikes. Yeah. Yeah. So they would have, you know, shotguns, yeah, etc., which which I quite like the idea of. And yeah. we did have first edition rules for a kind of lightweight jet bike, didn't bike. we? Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what it was called. That's right, yeah, yeah, we did. And yeah. again, I just think it's a going back to what I was saying before, if you want to run like a jet bike force, uh, uh, outrider force, it just, rather than just having to run, well, I've got five outrider squads, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a bit of variety to, yeah. to that force. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. I think the danger might be that, say, like a recon, because recon squads can be given metal bombs, right? Yeah. Um. So I think the danger would be that you would have, you know, if you had a recon squad that can just take metal bombs on everybody, I think that it would be pretty nuts because they can move so far so quickly and then just blow up your bike. So you need some kind of mechanism where either they can't take melt bombs or melt bombs are quite expensive yeah but that's I what think, i was gonna say yeah. but i think you're right having more variety is good because it allows like a bike and jet bike army to have some close combat anti-tank and i think yeah that, that is yeah because you know, they won't have access to like chain fists and things like that so i no. think that's not not a bad shout so yeah that's that'd be quite cool um i i think if i'm putting that on a list of things that we will definitely see to a list of things that we'll never see <laughs> I'm definitely <laughs> putting it uh, near near the bottom, but uh, I, I mean always, it's a I, shame because it's kind of stuff that we did have that's kind of just been taken away. Correct, but, yeah, yeah, for for no for no. Well, reason. I'd imagine it's a model thing, isn't it? Yeah. They've probably got rid of the 40k models. I I don't honestly yeah. know. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. A good point. Uh, so light close support flyer, a proto storm talon. Interesting. So uh, I would argue you already have something like that in the in a Xiphon interceptor and the lightning uh lightning um as well which are lightweight flyers with a couple of last cannons on and you know a couple of missiles and they're yeah. 100, 100 points That's so i had to google what a storm talon was I it's didn't... one of those tiny little actually t- it's one of the tiny, tiny things, little yeah. uh 40k flyer things yeah um i do like the idea of of kind of uh heresy era versions of 40k Yep. units like, yeah i think that's quite cool yeah um but yeah i feel like you would just end up taking javelins yeah that i think yeah it's interesting because what you're saying is you're basically looking for a helicopter you're not actually looking for a flyer yeah you, what you yeah. want a helicopter that doesn't zoom around the board or this yeah. person just wants it to hang around like a um one of those mechanicum uh i want to say voyrex but i don't think that's right it's the ones that hover in the uh, air yeah you know exactly what i mean yeah um, yeah yeah but uh, like Lee's absolutely right. You have you basically have that in the version of a of a, of a javelin, right? But no, there are no bad ideas here. But I think that you, I suppose, you're sitting somewhere between a javelin and a um, xiphon. But there's not many points between it. I mean, they're basically the same amount of points. So I think that's where, where, where would you tricky, isn't where it? Where would yeah. you sit that to yeah. you know in terms of its toughness, its strength, its AV value, whatever. Um, but yeah, interesting. Uh, Mechanicum flyers. Now, are they suggesting that we should be using the ones from 40k, perhaps? The kind of like, well, no, I think this is, I, I mean, I am not an expert on Mechanicum, but basically they lost all their flyers, right? Okay, um, so yeah, okay. give them something, 
give them okay. something give them um, give them a plane of some kind yeah yeah okay All but right. then i guess the counter argument to that which is more of a rules thing is most flyers are just shit anyways aren't they unfortunately yeah that's the thing um, and, they, and then going back to it they do have access to a an automata that can hover in the air as yes well. but it's no longer a flyer Mm, I don't think it was ever a flyer before. I thought it was. Uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody who plays Mechanical yeah, Tennis. I, what I it was thought... in a previous edition. I can I can tell you right now because I have all the old books up. Here. But um, yeah, I, I think it is kind of, again, I'm not an expert on Mechanicum, but it, it seems a bit daft to uh, to just kind of not have any flies. Yeah. Um, yeah. It seems like they're, they're missing missing something i don't know i'm not but very rare do you hear of the times in black library novels where the mechanicum sent their air support wing you know the that the, yeah. the, the mechanicum busters over to the fucking you know dams or whatever you know you just don't hear about it that's not a thing yeah, that may, you, know, you know they, yeah. if they're gonna have air support that's you know usually call upon the imperial navy or whatever or or space marine oh, know, i don't units. think the rules are in this book i think they well, let's just say um let's just assume that i was yeah i was i was right then okay Literally, cool. yeah um cool so proper artillery <laughs> units <laughs> i just think this person wants the ap value to yeah. go down on the yeah. artillery units like yeah. i just want to say the well the scorpius is still fucking nuts it's 120 so, points it's fucking brutal. if i if i remember correctly the message did say like basically artillery units that aren't the Scorpius. Because <laughs> okay, obviously you fair, just take fair. the Scorpius. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, this isn't a new unit, is it? We have the units. They're just shit. Yeah. Um, But I don't think it's the weapon because the trouble is, I, I mean, I used to get so bored in first edition, you uh, know, like strength, strength 10, AP 10, 1, AP 2, yeah, yeah, whatever AP it was, one. Yeah. Medusa one. And you're just like, right, okay, yeah, remove that, next yeah. turn, yeah, remove that, next turn, remove that. And there's no fun to be had with that. It's just boring. I have, actually, I have yeah, I have no problem with with better artillery weapons as long as they whack 100 points onto every single unit. And that's the thing, yeah. Because or, it, it, they've got to be costed correctly. Or have what they have now and just massively reduce the points. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I yeah. would not want to go back to no agreed. strength 10 ap2 was, that was the worst oh, it was so oh. fucking tiresome and the fact that you yeah. can re-roll scatter so easily now with non yeah. boxes would just it, like you you need like you either need to get rid of the rules on the nuncios and the twin links and iron fires or whatever or you, you know or you maintain it as it is i yeah. i actually think that artillery is in not a bad place and if you are hankering for medusas that were strength 10 ap1 or ap2 or whatever they were you need to take a long hard look <laughs> in the mirror because that was no fun for people no. who didn't take artillery so and especially when you play that against someone running uh iron warriors iron fire yeah oh so yeah. they're literally yeah. not missing you're yeah. just removing units every turn yeah and there's no fun to be had with that yep um, agreed 100 so 100 yeah. <laughs> um see heavy vehicles with indirect fire so i assume this is kind of discussing kind of like the fell blade or whatever they need to be able to see the target um to be able to fire at it i i don't think that's a bad idea really but i oh, yeah. i mean i quite yeah. like the idea of just a new unit we've never seen before which is basically just a fuck off artillery piece artillery um, piece yeah okay yeah, yeah. yeah. kind yeah. of um auto reductor kind of level kind of thing yeah 600 um, point kind of like yeah. massive yeah but it's, you yeah. know and that's the sort of thing that you could give it a better weapon but yeah. you're paying the points for it, points for it. yeah um, and then you could shut it down with a venator right that's the thing and that yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah interesting or yeah your, or your recon bikes with melter bombs yeah it's interesting <laughs> your, your I... scout bikes your scout bikes uh, yeah exactly bombs. yeah or, or proteus <laughs> with grab right just fucking end that thing <laughs> i i think that um I have seen way more Primarchs than I have seen Super Heavies. Probably that's a testament to where we're at with Super Heavies. But I also think it's partly because there's such an emphasis on scoring with the change in the message with Siege of Cthonia that actually having a Super Heavy is not necessarily a great points investment if you're required it's, to score. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there is a... Mul you know, the Glaive is a good example of where it got nerfed, you know, but it still has... 
like however many las cannon shots on it you know it's still got quite a, you know a relatively powerful weapon not as powerful yeah. as it was but i just think that people are prioritizing having four or five scoring units in a 3k list over just a, a toy that will destroy so yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 interesting i yeah i i'm not sure where i'm at with super heavy vehicles i think i'd like to see the ones we have in plastic before we start discussing yeah yeah kinds. but uh, yeah not a bad not a bad not a bad shout and then more sponsor options for land rays to kind of simulate the achilles i guess right but you know and, like and is, yeah from the yeah. side yeah and i really like this idea um yeah. i think it's you sick. know kind of melter you have to get close but once you get close you're 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 putting out you know pretty devastating anti-tank fire or whatever it was i think there's a volkite option as well wasn't there for the achilles yeah there was a volkite um, option uh, i i i really like that idea because um it, number one, it will be good to have a land raider that has, say, like an anti-infantry option with Volkite. But I, yeah. what I don't want to see is like just a Volkite culverin. What I'd like to see is, um, you know, something, you know, that's like a Volkite with eight shots or whatever, not not yeah. just like a, yeah. a typical Volkite culverin. Because yeah. I think that, um, but I think that's a great option. And I think like a Gravis Melter, you know, and you pay... It's just a, a swap, you know, if you have a look at the... Um, because a Gravis Last Cannon is on a Contemptor is more points than a Gravis Melter. Okay, yep. So I think that you could just have it as a direct swap. You wouldn't need to upgrade it. And the same for a Volkite. Volkite I just option. think it uh, gives a bit more utility to Land Raiders. Yeah, I, I agree. Think, yeah. 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 yeah, I'm a big fan of this. And I think the other the other benefit with that is like with the melter you know you're nice and close you shoot it and then you can you can you can charge the contents of it yeah. as well and yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I and i think the other thing that you yeah i i love that idea i think it's brilliant <laughs> yeah can't complain that is that's a good shout love that what's up next all right what we got next legion specific wolfen okay <laughs> right so i think you're probably all familiar with wolfen from 40k but essentially these guys have embraced their inner wolf uh we know the canis helix is kind of a defect within the in the sixth legion and some of them have got all over body hair um and their teeth are even more elongated and these guys are mentioned in um prospero burns yes. so we know of their existence uh but um i'd like to see i guess i think the models that we've got in 40k are a bit silly um so it'd be cool to see kind of like a hairy guys basically just massive hairy wolfen guys that are not <laughs> quite as derpy as the ones we have in 40k again i th but i think that this could fall under our, our possessed marines uh for you know our template for those yeah. guys i honestly yeah, yeah, think yeah. That it could fall fall under it you know and actually they have like uh, you know, an additional plus one to their movement, right? Or something like that, which will give them an additional plus one to their charge or, or whatever. They're just super quick, you know, super quick veterans. Fine, whatever. Yep. Loping around. Or, you know, they're super quick, but they have less weapon skill because they're just so, you know, they don't care about getting hit back or they, they hit on threes, but get hit on, or get hit on threes. You know, so, something like that, I think could be really, really cool. Uh, Space Wolves of Watch Pack. So uh, after um, the heresy, but I think after nice, no, after the heresy, basically Lehman Russ, Primarch of the Space Wolves, Vilka of Amrika, sent squads out to all the Primarchs to make sure that they were loyal to the Emperor. Well, it was, it was before the heresy, wasn't it? Uh, I think it was because of Magnus, I think, because Magnus had turned and they were like, uh, oh, I, I thought it was because what had happened with the two lost legions i i don't think that's right i think no? wrong about that i think it's because okay. Mag magnus was a dickhead and then okay and then i think that and the reason why i think that is because the sigilite and lehman russ have a conversation that goes okay well we need to go send space wars out to go check on the primarchs and make sure they're not fucking right. dabbling, okay. in, dabb dabbling in the war oh uh, you might be right okay. um so i think that this is quite a cool uh cool concept um and i would like to see this in an hq slot um and i would but if we had this i see this as like a squad of veteran for the space wolves but i want them to be treated as distrusted 
allies. So if they're within six inches of oh, another nice. unit, yeah, yeah. they've got to take uh, a morale check or all the all the units around them are pinned, right? Because they just don't trust these space wolves uh, uh, kind of around them or whatever. I think that would be nice. So you could take them. They're a good close combat unit, but you've got to keep them away from the rest of your units because otherwise the the, the other units could be pinned because they're trying to watch their watch their backs. Yeah, there was a there is a right of war for the space wars, isn't there? There is. Yeah. Uh, it's basically in the vein this. of this, but um, yeah, yes. I do think I think the models could be awesome as well. Yeah, um, the, that right of war is uh, you take it as an allied detachment specific okay. specifically yeah. i think so um but yeah just hq one hq unit and and again i think the legion the Liber panoptica guys have done something similar with this which i think is quite cool um but i love i love the concept i would really like to see them not allowed in blood angels armies because obviously the flesh terrors in the like um i've forgotten the guy's name but the flesh terrors uh, yeah. They kill them all. They don't kill they? them all, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I would like to see this not allowed yeah. in traitor forces, particularly night lords, because the night I think Kurz ends up fucking skinning them alive or whatever. Right. They just get absolutely bru brutally murdered. Uh, they're talked about with um Gilliman, aren't they? When, yeah, that might be the Alpha one. Legion. Yeah, for Gilliman, I I think that um, but so the uh, they're not the the same, but they come in to the rescue, don't they? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. I um. Oh no, sorry, that's not right. They come to the rescue with um with Kurs. They don't come to the rescue with the with the Alpha Legion. Gilliman fights them oh, off himself. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I would like to. It yes, might be. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, it might. Yeah. It might be cool with this to see um Gilliman being able to take them as a command squad. I yeah. know that's crazy, yeah, yeah. but it might be cool no, to, yeah. see, to see them as a command squad. And, as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and and I definitely don't want to see them being allowed within the Dark Angels as well. There's too much, <laughs> there's too much bitterness after the land. I think it is or whatever. Um, yeah. I don't want to see them there. So some legions can take them, some legions can't. But yeah, pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool. I idea. don't think the line would want the man. Yeah, you, you just turned to fuck off anyway. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. yeah. So some legions <laughs> tend to some legions can't. Uh, so we've got word bearers elite terminator unit. I thought that was just fucking greedy. Whoever suggested that, you already have, <laughs> you already have the gal ball back, which is some of the best. <laughs> models and little like units in the game don't be greedy but if you're going to do this i would like to see um i i guess something associated with corferon like yeah. they're so yeah. like their leadership Corrupted. 10 like they're stubborn um but i want to see them as weapon skill four so the leadership is insane yeah, but they yeah, spend yeah. so much time fucking reading their bibles or whatever <laughs> that they haven't spent enough time in the practice cages <laughs> um uh that yeah so they're insanely like inspirational maybe yeah. an inspirational bubble around them as well so other yeah, units like but it. they're they're not they're not close combat beasts that's what i want to see yeah uh salamander specific assault squad armed with hand flamers didn't we get this unit uh no we like, got i think ago. it was uh it was essentially a flamer squad wasn't it i don't think they oh, are right. uh, I, equipped with I, jump packs uh, so i think they had another unit within the um the legacies and they were given another unit that could take twin hand flamers but they weren't assaults marines yeah, they were just so i think this is dudes. specifically something fast moving for the salamanders yeah this again this greedy person basically <laughs> basically wants destroyers that aren't destroyers that's yeah. essentially what yeah, this yeah, greedy yeah. person wants. Yeah. I, that's fine that i <laughs> i can i think that would be really cool uh they're not allowed rag grenades um but they are yeah that i mean that would be cool but the, but they're asking for destroyers that aren't destroyers right you know and you can t and salamanders can take destroyers just not within some i assume it, within Certain some some right, of wars, right yeah. of wars you know so yeah. you kind of have you kind of have access to that already so not i'm gonna ignore your suggestion that person can <laughs> move on i uh i really like this next one i've never even heard of it no i've fucking heard of it wait maybe uh, did we miss it in our um oh we must have I, I, we must well, have missed it. it yeah when we did our siege of uh siege of uh Cathania, um uh kind of study our po history podcast um yeah so we've got dark angels nor Fragia very kind of Transylvanian, Romanian kind of thing going on with that. Dreadwing Terminators armed with plasma and space cannons. Kind of fucking hell. Fuck They've yeah. already got some of the best <laughs> shit in the game. People are like, God, so these, yeah. our, our viewers are such greedy little <laughs> bastards, aren't I they? I would say a lot of the comments were set kind of like, <laughs> yeah, I know we've already got a lot. However. <laughs> so I, it'd be quite cool. I mean, I, 
it'd be great to see plasma cannons as an option for terminators well, what the for, uh, for what's the um i think i think this unit does specifically come with these i i think it is something in the law right okay and okay. and they're written as coming with these i've i've not heard of them or if i have i've it's been deleted from my brain but um i, I like them but you can't the, uh, have weapon the, uh... skill five and fucking no, plasma cannons no, attached fucking... to them they're allowed no, weapon skill four be... and plasma cannons these would be your standard terminators yeah. with some funky weapons yeah yep, um, yep, yep. what the uh the flame is that the uh the dreadwing unit takes <coughs> plasma burners the plasma burners something like that would be quite cool yeah, uh, like, I, a, like a yeah. like a heavier version of, the of, of what we already have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I and it's interesting. I think and this goes back actually to, and I suppose about rules design. And I'm no expert on rules design at all. But I think the problem is is that there's I suppose the difference between wish listing and balance, which is that everyone wishes that their yeah. terminators had weapon skill five plus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And everyone wishes that all their special units have weapon skill five plus, but you you can't have it all. You could have like high leadership and a lower weapon skill, or high toughness and lower leadership. And yeah. you know there's a balance to be made, or you pay the points for those units. But you've seen what happens when points go up drastically for say four Montaris. People just go, no, I'm not taking those. They're not yeah. worth the points anymore. So again, it's got to be competitive. So I think all these ideas that we've gone through are pretty cut like cool. Um, cool ideas but i just think that it's now it's the problem is is costing them correctly um where people look at it and go i'm not sure whether i would take those guys or those guys and that's yeah. good because you, it, they're well costed you don't want an obvious choice to hear because then that becomes boring because all you've done is yes you've added more units but now everyone just takes that one unit yeah i um, and it's the same it's for, a fine line yeah same for upgrades because actually nowadays you see most people take thunder hammers over paragon blades but do you remember 1.0 every single fucking pro tool had a power paragon blade like yeah, i don't know yeah, what yeah. factory was creating paragon blades but you know just like just pre- pumping them out pumping them out these, these artisan things we need you know. paragon blades <laughs> <laughs> like, was, you know and now the, the, is they've retooled all the machines to make fucking thunder hammers now well, we they, wore it know? out didn't we they worn out the paragon blade machine now they're pumping out thunder hammers. i know and there's the great thing about a paragon <laughs> blade was because you were always hunting for sixes the the um the amazing moments when you kill a castellax in one with one yeah. murder at strike or yeah. whatever um but now you just you don't get that so much with a just a brutal two thunder hammer but yeah it's been um yeah this has been good. have we got any after this or is this the yeah, the yeah no, there's the... um Closing. there are some more oh, there's some we more others deep striking beaker so this was um at Fulgrim's plaything. So I'll, I'll read you what he wrote. It's a great name. Um, yeah. <laughs> so a piece of terrain or model, uh, think Tarantula variant, you can yeah. set up as a deep strike beacon, which if you land within six inches of, cannot be intercepted. Um, and Ooh. then he goes into loads of stuff. But yeah, essentially to protect your deep striking units yeah. from being intercepted, um, which I really like the idea of but then i just go back to is the is it the intercept rule that needs changing rather than creating a unit to make deep striking but then i quite like you know i I do quite like the idea if you put this down but your units might not land within it's a bit of a gamble you know you pay the points for this and then it's a bit of a gamble I think um, um, I think yeah, the concept's quite good. I wonder whether you could change it to something like a shroud beacon or something. Which yeah, is, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. Land, you yeah, then I mean, get yeah. five up, a five up shrouded. Yeah, um, which just allows you to because it's just the survivability issue, um, and the other issue is that deep strike. I understand that intercept is strong, but also deep strike can be so strong as well because you can assault from it now. So yeah. I think yeah. that. Um, you're right. I think that, that, yeah, it's a bit of a dilemma, really. And it, it comes actually down to how people build their lists. And it's literally that, you know, whether people build a balanced list and they have a bit of deep striking, a bit of intercepts, or whether they're all heavy support units and then deep strikers get blown off the board, or whether they're yeah. entirely deep strike. And then, you know, you've got no chance if you've got no intercept. So it's it's, it's really difficult, that. But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, fine. Deep striking beacon, fine. 100 points. There you go. So, you know, 5% of your points for a 2,000 point list are now spent on, you know, a deep strike beacon, which we may or may not be able to use. So it's a risk, but it's a high, you know, high number of points to be able to. Um, 
but then again it comes back to the um i can't remember what it's called now the drop pod that i exactly said right. from yeah. um legions imperialis um so it's not a million miles from no. that. Yeah, from, from i that quite like the idea of it i like yeah. that it's quite a small area yeah definitely an inventive so, idea but we're I, yeah nobody, nobody else came up with a deep striking beacon which i think is quite cool yeah that's good uh volkite rapiers i agree we definitely need those and they need to be not just volkite culverins they need to be something uh something yeah. else. it'd be great to have volkite rapiers something like like a macro saker which is like eight shots or 12 shots or whatever pinning you know something slightly different from just the normal volkite that we're all used to um but yeah I, basically I think when really you different. create your land raider sponsor and volkites uh you just them make on. them the same as the rapiers Put them, uh, put them on that one. I think that's good. And a bit of anti-infantry as well, slightly yeah. stronger. And also what I like about Volkite Rapiers, and this is the, the the key thing, is that it might discourage people from taking Volkite Heavy Sports Squads because Volkite Rapiers cannot, into, well, they can't react. So yeah. it's just another option. Um, and But they need to be competitive enough with heavy support Volkite Marines to be able yeah. to... To, yeah. to be able to take them but yeah i like i really like the idea of volcat rapids i think it's great and we've got uh relics and sarcana which were things that we could get in 1.0 but things that were utterly kind of obliterated from 2.0 yeah. so these were kind of lots of these things the sarcana particular were things to stave off demons and fight off demons weren't yeah. they and then the relics some of them were absolutely bananas so the problem with the relics was that you know they were a piece of upgrade kit you know and it ranged from like 10 points to fucking 80 points but some were just so obviously better than others that what you saw is just this relic this dark age of technology relic that there was only one of a kind you then saw 40 of them at an event because it was just so good yeah you know i think then, the pistols i think disintegrated pistols yeah. or something like that was just fucking nice. eventually everyone just banned relics yeah. and sykana from yeah. events because there was so, there was one or two options i can't even remember what they were now but there were one or two options that everyone took yeah there was a was it like a plasma gun or something I, it, I think it might have been like a disintegrator pistol or something right. like that something that along those lines absolutely fucking batshit yeah um so that's the risk with anything like oh that. there was and a sword as well that the, there was a like a magical yeah i seem to remember a sword yeah, yeah. they're like three up instant like murder strike or something it was right it was bananas, um, yeah. but i mean that comes back to everything we've talked about today is you need to you need to if you, if you create new units weapons whatever it is you need to not make something that already exists um redundant yeah. essentially yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, that's exactly what Relics and Saikana did. Yeah. I mean, some of the, uh, the some of them were cool. Like the thing is, some of them were really cool. I think you got Legion specific ones as well. Yeah, that's you? right. Yeah. Some some, some, some were amazing. And yeah. Some were just yeah. Not so much. Terrible. But some were really cool. But it was the I think the problem comes where you there's one that's so obviously good that you stop this. The, there's no longer a choice that yeah. that becomes yeah. the that yeah. becomes the issue. Um, so. Yeah, but saying that we're not we're not rule writers. But if you want to send GW, if you want to send us some playtest rules, we're happy to happy <laughs> yeah, to playtest yeah. them for you and uh, put them through their paces and give us feedback. Right, cool. I think that's probably the I end of it. Is that's that? it? So this is now um, the units that already exist. We just don't have models for. So ah. bring back. Well, we did have models, but they took them away. Ah, and first up is. Oh no, no, oh, Rights of War. Oh, of I'm war. getting ahead of myself. Rights. Sorry. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. I, I agree. Uh, Destroy a company of Right of War is desperately 100%. desperately needed. I'd like to see a compulsory um a compulsory um Moritat within there and yeah. uh, or and or Siege Breaker. Um but I if you're gonna take a destroyer company of Right of War, I don't uh, I don't think your destroyers should have line. I okay, think yeah, that no, they, no, they, they can become troops, but they you can't get line on them. 100%. So, Destroyers yeah. aren't there to capture objectives. They're there to melt everything. Yeah. They are not um, interested in, exactly to say, they're there to, like, a scorched earth thing. Yeah. Like, that's the whole point, yeah? Yeah. And, um, you know, it might be even brave, and this is an interesting one, to say, if you take Destroyer Company, you can't take, like, Tap Marines, right? Or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, you are incapable of scoring, uh, this is just you know and if you go in with this right of war you need to realize that this is this is about damaging and hurting your opponent not about trying to win the day on objectives yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Breach Company, Right of War. Yeah, I think that'd be good. I think that you'd struggle to not make it Stone Gauntlet. That's a um, risk, isn't it? Yeah. You know, re- how are you going to how are you going to improve it? Right. So, re- what everyone's going to get a re-roll. Everyone gets a plus one. Once you start doing that and adding apothecaries, it becomes very difficult to mulch through those things. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, I think it's good in essence, and I quite. But I think it's just around the buff that you get. You know, what is the buff going to be that you? provide to the breachers that isn't obnoxious in a way that stone gauntlet is is it can be obnoxious yeah i think is the issue there tactical company right of war why what i mean whew. so i guess the only thing i can think of that it would be remotely like this is the dark angels storm yeah so like a, a centurion right? can be added to yeah uh, centurion item yeah but then I, mean, I guess yeah. the risk is you're just copying the dark angels Stormwing time. That's that's so, the issue, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, um you yeah, th- there are some simple things. For example, you could take thirty marines in a unit. You mm, could uh, yeah. every time they fire, they're always double tapping, or they are relentless. Like when they uh, when they double tap or when they fury, they are they are relentless. You know, something something along those lines. But I think that what is interesting about this is that you don't often see blobs of twenty tack marines when we host events no. they tend to be in tens you know tens in a rhino tens. yeah um which suggests to me that there isn't a huge amount of need for a tactical company right of war and actually when we did our analysis of the rights of war for dark angels i think universally we kind of accepted that actually stormwing was probably one of the weaker ones yeah because the buffs it gave we didn't make it competitive with the other ones as well yeah. so yeah yeah re- really interesting um but yeah, if you guys have got ideas for a tactical company right of war, then put them in your put them in the uh, comments below. Um, I, I, okay, another idea might be that free rhinos, right? So you don't pay for the cost of the rhino. If yeah. You're taking ta- tactical company I right guess of war. the risk there is you're going closer to the seventh edition formations, was and it? that's Which and that's the and that's the problem, got right? Stupid. Yeah. I quite like the idea of kind of I don't know, like interlocking fire or something. So yeah, you have squads working together. Yeah, that's great. And then yeah. both can Overwatch or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so you get more of a uh, yeah, almost like an Ultramarine style kind. Yeah, of Yeah, I was going to say this other. feels feels a bit like the Logos Lectoria, which is that you don't have any deep strikers like everything is all the buffs are entirely around infantry like because the, mm. that's the thing about the logo selectora it only infantry gain the buffs like contemptors tanks speeders they don't gain the buffs so like for one turn you can have plus one weapon skill on all, yeah. all your infantry yeah, yeah. so like that might be a good template for for it but again it, are you taking away from ultramarines and dark angels by doing something similar that's similar the risk the, isn't it yeah and this one though i absolutely agree a hundred percent that this is needed which is a terminator yeah. teleportation assault right of war um so at this moment in time if you're an imperial fist and i think another legion can do it you can buy teleportation transponders to to add to your terminators and you can just buy that for like 25 points and deep strike your terminators but other legions don't have access to it. And I think the reason why I really think this is important because it's so iconic within the law of space marines that we understand. Terminators deep striking in um, and then just fucking running amok um, and just like assaulting things out of deep strike, et cetera, et cetera. I want to see when it deep strikes, it creates a blind, like yeah, a yeah, blind, yeah. but I guess it's what yeah. they have with pinning or whatever. Um, but I think that um because with the old drop pod assault terminators gained deep strike didn't they with drop like with the uh, orbit, yes. with orbital yeah, yeah, assault yeah, Terminator, so. yeah. Term, yeah, terminators did, gained yeah. deep strike yeah, yeah. and they took that away it just became the only things that had deep strike or could buy drop pods but could come in so they kind of took this way and i think it'd be great to see um uh, this introduced uh, back in you know and it would really encourage an old terminator uh, i terminator think boss. you could do some really cool fluffy rules because yeah. like you say in the black books this is always kind of talked about yeah you know you get that kind of bang of static electricity and then all yeah. of a sudden these lunatics are there yeah and then it talks about the actual teleportation can be quite disorientating so you could yeah. even have rules that they're not allowed to assault the turn yeah. they arrive yeah but yeah. they can fire twice or something like yeah. that you know yeah. so because in the books it's always they're in a circle and they're just fucking hammering everything near them um, yeah absolutely but, like but i yeah, think this I, 
really 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 cool like yeah. you know spit you know and it plays into the like the sons of horus law it plays into yeah. loads of loads of yeah. law and i think that it goes back to some one of the issues about imperial fist which is that through their war gear they have access essentially to terminator the teleportation and assault yeah. right of war whereas nobody else has access to that through a right of war so it'd be great to great great to see that i um what i would like to see though with something like this limitations is you must take cataphracty terminators as uh, your as your troops yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, i just I like think that. that you know the weapon skill four um they limit you, you know that that just limits some of your some, some of your units and and you know and then where do you go with line so if you want more line you would have to have, take more Terminator squads or heralds or command squads who are Terminators as well, and I think that that would be a good way to um, uh, l kind of like limit the how powerful this could potentially be. Yeah, no, I like it. Yeah, great, great uh, Terminator Temptation. I of all the things I've heard today, I think that was a hundred percent one that we definitely need. Okay, so hopefully this is now things that I want brought back. <laughs> okay yeah, yeah unless yeah. i've forgotten something else there it is so we have um, rules for this and they've updated the we rules have for rules this, for right? this and they have yeah they made them better because they were pretty terrible yeah um, um but we don't have any model for it but they don't i'm pretty sure they don't sell it anymore no um, don't sell it at all which is a shame because it was fucking cool really cool yeah it's in loads of the artwork you know <laughs> it's kind of there the, the pictures are there the model just doesn't exist um and I love it. And again, you could have something like this as part of your deep striking Terminators. You have these flying in as well. Oh, mate. Yeah, this would be fucking amazing. Um, yeah. It's yeah, just we a need... cool model. It's just cool a model. brilliant model. Iconic. It'd be great to have this in plastic. Doesn't yeah. look like it'd be too difficult to make this in plastic. No. But I don't know yeah. much about injection injection molding, I must say. I mean, it's it's a brick, isn't it? With a couple of little stumpy wings. It can't yeah, be exactly. that. Exactly right. <laughs> right. Um... The Ironclad Dreadnought. Yeah, so, um, I mean, they got rid of this from 40k, right? So, yeah. you know, but it's still an iconic uh, model. It's spoken about in a lot of the lore. Um, and, yeah, you just can't access any... You can't actually officially buy no. any Dreadnought anymore. So, yeah, this is kind and of again, needed, isn't it? And again, it's such a cool model. Yeah. Such a cool model. Um, I'd love to see something like this brought back. Uh, up next, the Achilles. Um, oh, and there's the Volkai, uh, sponsored. Um, again, I just love it. I just think it looks absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, just just bring it back. It's yeah. it's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. And yeah, great. the last one, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> it, ah, no, interesting. The yeah, Legion okay. Macarius Omega Heavy Tank. And I actually think the rules for this are actually pretty good. If you want some large blast um, shooting. Um, but again, it's just a really cool model that um, we have rules for. We just yeah. can't buy it. Yeah, yeah, it's such a um, yeah, such a really cool, really cool model. And that is it. That is everything. And here is, oh, here the, is uh, the Rhino. Look yeah. at that. That's the most. That's insane. That's completely <laughs> obscene. I love it. It's like, so eighties. But also, it's like like the size of that Rhino to fit that many guys in. It's I know. Yeah, ridiculous, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. It's the size of a super heavy, basically. <laughs> that. Know, know. <laughs> okay. um, but I do. I do really like the uh the idea of this it's it's like a um i don't know it's like a large version of a like world war ii bren carrier yeah, or something just yeah. like a load of dickheads yeah. hanging out the back well it's got yeah and you can see the ramp as well actually at the back can't you it's just got the got the top off of it and yeah okay that, what a most that's the most spaceful thing i've <laughs> It's just, it's just a long way. It needs some shield on the side, right? You know, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, some oars when it gets yeah. stuck. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, uh, right, so I think that's uh, probably it for uh, it for us. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. We're just going to um, kind of follow it up with a few admin bits and pieces. Um, but if you've got any suggestions on what you think is missing, you know, we probably have only scrape the surface of this uh topic so if you've got any ideas then put us put it in the um uh, put it below we, we're not really interested in in full 
uh kind of a profile for them but just an idea and just you know one or two cool rules might be yeah. might be good and maybe an idea on costings as well but um yeah it's been a fun it's been a fun chat actually this one i hope you guys have enjoyed listening uh, to it as well so let's just see the show out so uh thanks again to battle bling for sponsoring the uh show these guys do all things uh eight mil and legions imperialis uh, and thank you to Curtain Games as well, um, which is a game shop in the south of, oh, I want to say southwest of England. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, who've done us a solid by supporting us and host all sorts of heresy events as well. So make sure you check them out and follow them on Instagram so you don't miss out on any heresy events from those guys. And thank you to Beowulf Miniature Printing, who's a huge supporter of our show, and you can get your 3D printed bits. He's got a great website for you to go and explore, selling all things Mark VI, Mark III, Mark IV, Mark V, you name it, he's got it. Look at the cool. size of that. Woo! And thank you. I don't think we mentioned <laughs> the Patreon once. We got through the whole show without mentioning the Patreon. No, I mentioned it yeah. now. So these are our top tier patrons. This isn't even the list of all our patrons. This is just our top tier Pro Talk patrons. So thank you ever so much, guys, for supporting our show. You are the best of our friends uh, <laughs> of the show. Thank you ever so much. Uh, and just a final note on the Patreon, which is that if you want to support us, you've enjoyed the content today and you would like more content, uh, then you can go support us on our Patreon, where we do two Tactica shows a uh, a month. Me and John have just finished a three-part series on the Solar Auxilia. We looked at uh, kind of the key units as well as some of the miscellaneous units that you'll probably enjoy playing with um, as well. And we did a real deep dive. I think that probably went over about four hours of extra oh, sure. heresy content to look at to kind of explore soda auxilia with so um yeah we're not quite sure what's coming in march uh so watch this space um but yeah so i'm sure you enjoy that don't forget to use hashtag heresy hammer uh if you've got this far and aren't subscribed what are you doing make sure you <laughs> subscribe and it'd be really great if you could comment and share just click the share you don't even need to share it anywhere just click the share because the youtube will register that as you sharing it um and it just gets the show out there uh if you've got any list ideas do you want to send us heresyhammer30k at gmail.com? And of course, for as little as £3 a month, you can support us continuing to make content through our Patreon as well. We would really appreciate the support. And with that, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Lee. Goodbye, goodbye. See you later, guys. See you soon. See Bye-bye ya. Now. Cheers.